beauty is all around every turn as you travel across this wondrous region of Ontario. Known for its breathtaking vistas, crystal clear waters, clean air and friendly people, this is Algoma country. Surrounded by two of the greatest Great Lakes, Huron and Superior, and dotted with countless lakes and rivers, these magnificent bodies of clear, beautiful water will offer many reasons to stop along the way. This week, Jamie Pastilli and Colin McEwen stop in Sault Ste. Marie and fish to St. Mary's Rapids in search of migratory rainbow trout, or as they're more commonly known as steelhead and Pacific salmon. It's going to be a great show, so stay with us. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. The new Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Algoma Country, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. Ontario Lodges and Outfitters look forward to welcoming international anglers when it's safe to travel once again. Sault Ste. Marie is centrally located in Ontario, poised in the middle of the magnificent Great Lakes and strategically placed in the centre of North America. The great thing about coming to Sault Ste. Marie is, it's a drive-to destination. For those who want to have world-class fishing on a budget, Sault Ste. Marie is where you want to come. The availability of rooms at very nice, reasonably priced hotels is citywide. Also, qualified guides are available. Hiring a guide is important for at least a day in order to learn the access points and the best pools in the rapids. On this trip, our choice of guide was Tyler Dunn of Tyler Dunn Guiding. Tyler not only guides for steelhead and salmon, he also offers ice fishing trips, bass for both smallmouth and largemouth, Nipigon Dream Pike trips, walleye, and muskie fishing. Reaching the rapids, it became quickly clear there was plenty of fish in. Hey Tyler, we just got down to the rapids. We're here nice and early. We got some prime areas here now. Tell me, why are we set up here and uh, what setup are we using this morning? Uh, pretty simple, man. We're going to keep her nice and uh, easy. Just a woolly bugger down to an egg. We're going to do a bit of swinging, just a couple split shots. Uh, sometimes we'll use indicators just to see the light bites, but today with the Kings, uh, they're hitting it pretty good, so I don't think we have to worry about an indicator. But uh, these fish are prime spawning season right now. They're on their beds. There's hopefully some steelhead behind eating, so the woolly bugger's kind of looking for the, uh, the salmon. That egg is looking for some trout. So we got all we need to hook some fish? Absolutely. Let's get at it. Let's do it. Down. Whoa. Nice, buddy. Nice, Jamie. Good hook up, man. Great hook up. There we go. Great hook up. Great hook up. There we go. That, that didn't take too long. <laughs> Little release and uh, great hook up, sip man. of coffee and we're back at her. <laughs> You're lucky to have this in your backyard. Oh man. Well, the uh, yeah. Algoma region, there's so many different it's a, opportunities. In my opinion, it's the multi-species mecca of Ontario, if not Canada. Uh, I'm not saying that just because I live here and from here, it really is. The only thing we don't have a lot of is brown trout. Other than that, there's pretty well every species you can catch, you want to catch in, in Canada, you can catch here in Algoma and pretty much in Sault Ste. Marie. One thing you have to accept when fishing for Chinook salmon is you will lose a fair amount of fish. At this time of year, Chinook salmon are usually over 20 pounds. So the hook up to land ratio is for every 10 fish hooked, you'll only land around two. Oh, I pulled a break. That said, you will be having the time of your life. Look at that. 
These big fish use the current. What he did was straighten the hook right out. So after you lose a fish or hook a rock, it's very important to check your fly. Make sure things are sharp. Give it a, a little touch up with the hook file and get it back in the water. The first technique that was tried was a simple swinging method. Cast out your line parallel to the riverbank, give one or two men's upstream, then let the river current do the work. It's important to follow the line with the rod tip. This keeps a tight connection between your rod and the fly. Nice Fish buddy. On. Nice, Jamie. There we go. Good hook up. Yeah, good call on changing colors. You know, we, we had a pink pattern on and uh, to the orange. went over to orange and sometimes it's all it takes. Big thing here, big thing is uh, you see the fish, we know the fish are here. We do those drifts, not getting takes, not getting takes. You gotta change colors. Yeah, so, hey. Change your setup, change your split shots, change your colors. They use that current to their advantage, eh? They just sit there and- Sit there and they actually recover and they sit there and hold on there. They sit there and they can rejuvenate. So I like to keep a lot of pressure on them. Well, I'm always getting guys to go side pressure a lot. Keep them working always. What we don't want is to get down around those rocks. No, 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 no. We gotta go down, we can go down. Nope, he's coming here. Coming up. We got a first fish of the day. That was a great little battle. We changed colors of flies, like you said, yep. and uh, up and down the river, yep. we finally got this guy in the net. Yeah, it hasn't been an easy start today, but this makes it all worth it. Yeah, so I think we got uh, the lucky color <laughs> color of egg pattern, and uh, we're gonna have a look, quick look at this guy and see what else we can do. Well, oh, great start to the morning, Jamie. Yeah, a nice little, it's, uh, nice king salmon. It's king salmon, we're gonna keep at it. There's a lot of fish moving around these holes. It's getting a little feisty, they're starting to fight. And some uh, steelhead moving through as well. Yeah, so. Man. Thanks so much. No problem. So you have year-long angling opportunities here in Sault Ste. Marie, yep. eh? Absolutely, especially here in the rapids. Uh, it's a fish factory. Uh, 365, we have runs coming through. Spring, we have the steelhead, obviously. Summer, we have the Atlantics. Uh, we also have a good resident rainbow fishery in the summertime. And then once fall comes around, we have the Pacific salmon, the pinks, kings, cohos, and the steel drive again. Wow, and then further down, there's there's walleye, there's whitefish, so. Pretty well every species you can fish for is further down river. Uh, we have all the bass, walleye, pike, whitefish, um, gar pike, uh, perch, you name it, it's, it's in the river. Wow, we're blessed to be on this magical river and hopefully we can uh, cross a couple of those species off Let's our list it. today. Around the end of April into early May, the steelhead move into the rapids in numbers. I had been visiting at this time for years. As you will see, this is why I love this place so much. Please note that we at the New Fly Fisher have stopped using any sort of tailing glove while we fish. They aren't necessary. Nice little male. Yeah. It's really colored, eh? Now, this is exactly where Brad told me the fish was. Holding at the top of the pool, and I placed the, the fly high enough up that uh, it got down in time. Oh, nice four pounder. Yep. You got her there, buddy? There we go. There we go. go. Now, it's a good start. I've been here five minutes. It's a good start. Yeah, nice little. Nice pounder. colored up. This is your spawning colors. You see how deep that red is. And gorgeous. that's that's a small one for here. Yeah, right? oh, very small. That's very small. Nice little guy, though. <laughs> well, sir. Thank you. It didn't take long for the smell of skunk to get off us. It did. <laughs> huh? That, that's pretty good. No, I like that. No. On this trip, I'm indicator fishing. It's very important to get your indicator to float at a drag-free drift. Anything that pulls the indicator away from a drag-free drift transfers down to the fly, and this makes the fly seem unnatural, and the fish will usually reject it. Fish on. <laughs> There's a rock in front of me here. Brad told me to fish. He's seen two fish behind it. 
and they're hanging in the tight water there, and it's, it's been a real difficult drift to get to. But uh, I finally got one good drift and he took it. Not a very big fish, but it's a good one. It's a nice looking little female there, Bill. I don't know. It doesn't look very dark, so. You got it? I yep. can't see you. <laughs> got it, all right. There you go, buddy. Thank you. Now, this is a hen. If you look at the mouth, it's a lot smaller than the than that male I just got. Now I'm gonna wait till she kicks, and she kicked on yeah, her own. There she goes. Very good. Well done, sir. Thank you, thank you. Again, right behind the rock. Brad said he had, he had, he had spotted two fish there, and it was a little tough to work trying to get it to sink fast enough, so I added one more split shot, got it down quickly, and that's when it hit. Oh, let's do that again. Yeah. One thing I'm doing, I'm waiting till my indicator gets in front of me and then I throw big mend and continue to mend the line upwards. It's called stack mending. And you get a very, very long drift out of it. Keeps here, I'll show you, I'll show control. you again. Yeah, it's all control. Put the indicator over here, it gets in front of me. I throw the big first mend, then I just continue to stack mend like that. Nice straight drift down straight the Straight drift and Oh, oh boy, that's where I took that last fish, it was exactly there. That's a good one, whoa. Wow. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to run with this one. Now you have to be really careful when you're in the rapids because it's pretty hazardous walking. This is a really, really good fish. That's a big male. Big male, yeah. So, if I can keep him in this, this run here, I should be okay. Oh my goodness. Big, that is big, a good big, fish. Big male. Oh yes. <laughs> Oh man. Nicely done, Bill. Thank you very much, my friend. Here, shake my hand. <laughs> it's a way to do it. Oh boy, this this is oh, this tremendous. Is a fish. This is a tremendous fish. Wow. Now, how about that, folks? On a Kaufman stone. Kaufman stone, yes. Right behind a rock. Oh yeah. Okay. The end of August brings the first runs of pink salmon into the rapids, but the best time of year to be there is just after Labor Day. There are huge runs of fly-friendly pinks in it this time. I traveled there with fishing buddy John Babulik and we had a riot. Well, we've been along Highway 17, the fishing's been tough. So where do you go when the fishing gets tough? Back to a favorite haunt. Now we're on the St. Mary's Rapids now, and people that have watched our show before know this is one of my favorite spots to fish. I'm back in an old reliable hole. We're gonna try it for a little while here. And John says he knows some other holes on the rapids that maybe I don't know about. So I'm really excited about this. We have a pile of fish in front of us, so this should be good. You got yourself a, a male this time. Oh, and he's gonna go for a run. All right. All right. St. Mary's. Now look at that, that's, yeah. And you might have to go for a run because if he gets any farther. <laughs> There's a real advantage to having a uh, large arbor reel here because when they do turn and start to head back upstream, once you have them on the reel, you can pick up, pick up a fair bit of line quickly. And a long heavy rod is really an advantage with these fish. They will move back up with side pressure Sometimes when they get past you, it's best to turn the rod downstream and then they're fighting you and the current at the same time. Oh, big Chinook. I right see that, yeah, it. a big Huge Chinook just Chinook. moved in. Love that, whoa. Oh, that's too and bad. He got off. 
Well, that's the way it is. That's 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 part of the game. That's just part of the game. But shows you how pugnacious they can be. They're uh, good fighters, aren't they? They're ridiculously strong for their size and a whole lot of fun. When fishing migratory fish, especially in rivers like the St. Mary's River where there's a lot of current and a lot of rocks, the most important thing to do is to try and get a drag-free drift as possible. A lot of mending and focus on the tip of the line or the indicator, being as careful as possible that if there's even a hint of movement, for whatever reason, set. The, the best success comes when, when you think there may be a fish. It doesn't matter if there's a bit of a rock, you can pick up again and set, cast again. Fish on. Good man. <laughs> so what I did there, I mended over, mended over, mended over, made sure that I had good slack in the line, and when, when I saw even the tip of the line just make a slight curve, I set the hook. I wasn't sure when I set whether it was a rock or maybe just bumping into something on the bottom. Oh, good hen. Another good hen. Boy, we've taken a good number of hens today. There we go, chartreuse cactus fly. Algoma country pink salmon. Love it. Pinks here in the Sioux are much larger than they are further up in the north. Why? I don't know, but they seem to be larger. And again, another male. And you gotta gain control of them. If you don't, they'll be in that fast water and gone on you. So believe it, they're, they're, they're small, but they, they, they really, really fight hard. And in you go there, buddy. One after the other in the St. Mary's Rapids. I got a big male. I'm just gonna let him tire himself out a bit. I'm applying side pressure. I think he's just about done. I think he can start. I've got fairly heavy tipping on. I've got a 1X leader and I've- That's a good one there. A two yeah, X. That's a big one. It's a good one. Yeah, look at the size of it. I've got 1X leader, mine. 1X leader and 2X tippet. <laughs> Wowee, that's a big fish. You got my fly in his teeth. There we go. <laughs> Double header. Double header. You got to like it coming to the Sioux. Wow. Beauty. Wowee. How fun is that? Yours, yours is absolutely look wonderful. Look at that. Wonderfully big. The way mine goes. Mine's gone too. <laughs> no matter where you're fishing, you need to keep stealth in mind, both with your fly setup and how you approach the river. Well, this is an example of why you have to use structure on the shoreline, trees, big boulders like this, keeping low to make sure you don't spook the steelhead or the salmon. It's very, very clear water. These fish have got a little bit of pressure. I can see a, a bunch of Pacific salmon here that are getting ready to spawn. And right behind them, with my Polaroids, I can see two small rainbows that are waiting for the eggs to come down. They're just gently swimming in the current. But if I had stepped up here, jumped on the rocks and looked down, I would have seen them, and I would have seen them shocking off. You have to use stealth in order to catch these fish. Uh, we're not making huge long casts with a fly rod, unlike center pinners that can do that. So as fly fishers, just like in a small stream when you're fishing for trout, you've got to use a bit of stealth, use the structure like boulders, trees, keeping low, and look first before you step in, and you'll get more fish. One of the things when you're fishing on pressured water like this, uh, with really clear water, 
and this happens in a lot of trout streams in the American West here in Canada, is that when you're using an indicator and you're using a bright color such as this one or bright color like this one, um, they're going to spook the fish. Like they see that uh, bright orange or they see this bright red, other colors, you're going to spook the fish because they've gotten accustomed to seeing that and knowing when they see that there's danger. So in order to protect yourself and, and have a bit of stealth in terms of your presentation with an indicator, one thing you can do is either use a clear indicator or a white one. Because when the fish are looking up, they look like a bubble. So you're not gonna spook them. If you don't have the luxury of doing that, one of the things I keep in my waders all the time or in my uh, back backpack is a Sharpie. And so what you do is you mark the bottom of your indicator this is when you don't have white or clear indicators. Just mark the bottom. You can still see the top, it's nice and bright. But more importantly, the fish looking up are not gonna see that brightly colored indicator. They'll think it's a piece of junk or a piece of wood, but they're not gonna be spooked. Stealth is important, not just in when you're getting into position, but also with your indicators. We switched up tactics here at midday. Uh, we changed it up from fishing some spawning salmon up here, just stepping back a little bit. We're going to target some early run fall steelhead. I have Jamie now swinging some small streamers and some caddis flying them, looking for these fish. Good call, Tyler. <laughs> that and right through that spot? Yeah, right yeah. to that spot, right behind the rock. Yeah. Tyler, the sun popped out and we saw yeah. fish sitting there and able to pair, of, pair two fish each. Take the fly and just swing it in front of his nose and take another one on. Uh oh. We can chase him down too. We can? Yep. Keep that rod high, we'll walk down on him. You gonna carry me? <laughs> <laughs> Salmon fishing's a great way to stay in shape too. <laughs> Nice big meal, Tyler. Thanks awesome so much. Awesome fish, buddy. Awesome fish. Good mi mix of action today, and uh, this is the highlight of our morning so far. <laughs> Has that's, been. Lots of fish beauty. on and off, and uh, you know, a couple hit the net now, but this has by far been the nicest fish of the morning. Awesome. Awesome, buddy. Thanks, <clears throat> Nice fish, Colin. Ah. I suck. <laughs> what did it take, Colin? Nymph. So I just uh, made a big mistake, my fault, uh, here in the St. Mary's River. And something to learn is that I'd hooked one of the big Chinook salmon. Uh, we like to call them zombies. And got the hook out. I didn't want to, he took it in the mouth, but I didn't want to fight him. Fly popped out. What I should have immediately have done is checked my leader and my fly, and I didn't. And sure enough, less than five minutes later, casting, I hook into a steelhead, I'm fighting it. I've got him right here, I could feel his head shakes, it was definitely a steelhead. Bing, fly pops out, and I'm like, what did I do wrong? Bring the fly in. When I hooked that big chinook, I bent the hook slightly open, about a third. Even though it still has a barb, on the small fly, that's enough for a steelhead. With that head shaking, toss the fly. So that was my fault. So something you're gonna learn if you're steelhead fishing, uh, very much like Atlantic salmon, you ping it off the rocks. If you snag it, check the sharpness. And especially make sure you haven't bent the hook slightly so it's got a much more open gape. You're gonna lose fish. Did bite. See that? That was a great strike. That was awesome. That was pretty neat. <laughs> we saw the fly drip through and the salmon just went and grabbed it. <laughs> I thought it was a steelhead. I think everything's a steelhead. But uh, 
when you have your mind set on something. But uh, you know what? We're having a blast catching fish with some pinks. That was cool. We actually got to see him eat. No shortage of places to fish here in the Algoma region. Oh, we got a nice jump out of it. Very enjoyable trip, beautiful drive. You know, if you haven't visited Northern Ontario, it's sure worth the trip. Thanks so much, Tyler. Another, another battle here. Lots of fish around here, so Algoma's finest. <laughs> we'll let them go. We've run out of time for this week, so we hope you've enjoyed the show. We'd like to give out a big shout to Tyler Dunn for guiding us and Algoma Country for hosting us. To learn more about this show and others in our informative series, come see us on the net at thenewflyfisher.com. Also, sign up for our YouTube channel and see us on Facebook. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, and we'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Algoma Country, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. Ontario Lodges and Outfitters look forward to welcoming international anglers when it's safe to travel once again.